So this is a follow-up to the release of our new uh, PAPA tug, uh, P for platform. All of our tugs have a unique, uh, uh, you know, aviation letter attached to them. Our Bravo tugs were the first ones. Kind of started that way because Bravo for best tugs. Then we came out with an Echo, which is right on tug. The Sierra is a big commercial tug. Tango is one yet to come out. But uh, PAPA, or products and landing platform. So that's this new product line. We released the video, we got so much feedback. Um, I mean, 60,000 views before we're halfway through a day, over 500 comments, and thank you. Uh, first off, comments were overwhelmingly positive, and we really, really appreciate it. It motivates us to try to do better and, and continue to build cool new things for aviation. Uh, a few questions I think, I thought, wow, you know what? We did a disservice. We should have addressed some of these. We didn't think about these, but so let's tackle some of the comments from YouTube. What's the point of the wings if you have to land in the middle uh, to be able to close the wings? Quite frankly, it's just to be safe. If we could all land perfectly in a tight little area 100% of the time and just hit it, hit it, hit it, then you don't need wings. But when you have wings, if you don't hit it perfect and you hit off to the side, you don't die. And what we don't want is dead pilots or crashed helicopters. So we make the wings. Now, the bigger the landing platform, the bigger the target, the easier it is to land. Obviously, you need to be able to slide over or reposition to be able to close the wings. But let's go over a few of the options that are available. Um, one is don't close the wings, you know, land on it and just leave it there. 100% of the helicopter landing platforms built today did not have folding wings. This is a new thing. They're not needed for a lot of people. The reason we developed it is because we saw that a lot of people did need them. Us for, for one, some of the stuff we come up with is just because we need it. We think maybe other people need it too. Turns out based on all the orders that have already come in, other people really saw a need there as well. So first off is if you don't want to land and straighten up, leave the wings out, leave it flat. You might not need to fold them at all. The other option would be if you land, you're going to be to one side or the other. So just fold one wing. Uh, it, one of my hangers, I need both wings up uh, in my brother Mike's hanger. In my personal hanger, I only need one. I need a wing up so I can get past the hanger door um, and up against the wall. The other wing can stay down because it actually fits underneath the wing of the Pilatus. So you could just leave one wing down. So that's option number two. Uh, option three is to reposition. Hitting your spot in a helicopter is one of those things we start doing right the first week we're getting a helicopter license. As soon as we can hover a little bit, we practice hitting a spot. Now we don't always hit perfectly in the center. I certainly don't. I am a commercial pilot in fixed wing. I have that certificate. Um, in helicopters, the helicopter for me is something we donate to search and rescue. Um, I don't fly anywhere near as much as a professional helicopter pilot would. I love my helicopter and I love flying search and rescue, but I'm not super current. So for me, I don't hit the spot every time. When I'm landing on this platform, I can be all over the place. So what we're gonna do today is it's, I can actually see outside and it's kind of snowy and overcast and windy. So we're gonna go out in the worst case scenario. We're gonna get blown all over the place and try to land on this platform. And the primary purpose of that is to show you that once you step down, by lifting the collective just a smidge, you can twist the helicopter, you can slide the helicopter, you can move around just like you would landing out you know, off field anywhere, which is the whole point of helicopters, is that you can land as you start lowering collective. If it's unstable, you pick up and you adjust. You slide the nose left or right or pick the whole helicopter and move it. It's a simple skill set to develop and it should always be practiced. So we're gonna go out today on a windy day and uh, as the winds change up, we've got some fronts coming in. We'll try coming at it. We will not reposition the tug for the wind. We will just come in with the helicopter based on the wind and see how it does. That's the method we recommend. If you need to use the folding wings, you can do that. Um, we also make the tugs without folding wings. Our helicopter tug it has so many features and benefits that we haven't seen in the industry. We counted 27 things that make our tug live up to the best aviation brand. The folding wings is just one of them. So you could buy it just without the wings and just enjoy the four wheel drive and auto throttles and traction control, anti-lock brakes, speed, range, um, what we think is a good company to stand behind it and a whole lot of other neat features like jumpstart GPU or fuel cells. Or, uh, so there are other reasons to buy the tug for the folding wings.
Number five, uh, as far as the wings, is um, buy the bigger tug. Uh, the, all the tug videos that we've used for all this was the prototype. We've been using it and abusing it and trying to break it and climbing hills and, and just having fun trying to get it stuck in the worst case scenario. The prototype was built as a 14 by 14 because that seemed to be a really common size in tow behind or remote control landing tugs. Um, for me, I found the 14 by 14 um, that we're currently playing with. I still would like it a little bit bigger. I think the reason it's 14 by 14 is because it takes up so much space. But at our airport, we have um, at least a dozen airports that have a big, huge like RV door um, that faces the ramp. I like to open that door to get things in and out if I don't need to um, open the big door because it does let all the heat out. A 14 foot platform can't fit through there. Folding sides can. Um, so since the, even though the first one was 14 foot, um, the actual production unit, the smallest production unit we're currently planning on building is a 15 by 15 and then a 17 by 17. If the 15 by 15 internal landing pad isn't big enough and you're not comfortable just repositioning a little bit and you actually have to have the folding sides, go to the 17 by 17, you'll get two more feet. It's it's a ton of extra space to land on and uh, probably won't even need to reposition if you go that big. But what's great about our 17 foot unit, it's our P17, which is the 17 by 17, or our P17W, which is 17 by 17 with folding wings. The P17 is bigger than any other landing platform that we know on the market today, which adds a huge level of safety. Um, but when it folds up, to go into your hangar, not only will it fit through any you know garage door or like RV size door that you see on hangars like at our airport, but when it's folded up, our biggest platform, which is bigger than any of our competitors, folds up to narrower than our closest competitor's smallest platform. Like keeping this all in perspective, the whole world changes in what you can do and where you can go if you fold it up. Uh, the last option, option number six, not to be recommended. I will leave it and post it to the end of this video. It's some of our testing videos and trying out different things. And that was leaving the helicopter on crooked and using the wings to center the helicopter. So we don't recommend it. This is not permission. This is not recommendation. This is not your helicopter manufacturer saying you can do it. We'll just show you what testing we did was just using the wings to straighten up the chopper after the fact. And stick around for the end of that. Great question, everybody that asked about the, the wings. Uh, we appreciate it, and I hope that answered your question. So the next question that came up uh, several times, and I really appreciate it, and I appreciate uh, that you're concerned about this, and I believe for the most part, people were commenting on this out of a genuine concern, and maybe they, um, it, it should be addressed. So the uh, question is, if someone lands all the way to one side, that wing is going to res so in the tug flipping over, you could kill someone. Yikes. Could you imagine like landing on it, the tug just going like this and just dumping a chopper and holy cow. Um, not something to be taken lightly. We appreciate you bringing it up. The reality is, I have a Sharpie here, maybe I don't. Imagine with me, if you will. Our helicopter, oh, we got a picture back here. Our landing pads, the skids on the helicopter are pretty wide. If you landed that all the way right here on the very outside edge and tried to push down here to lift that side there, um, one, it would be a very unwise thing to do. Uh, you never drive a car as close to a cliff as you can just to see if you can do it. You try to stay in a lane that's safe. What we try to do is provide you a really big lane that's safe so if you get just all out of control and it's really windy like today I will be, I'm sure, um, you, you aren't going to set down and fall off the edge. But if you did, if someone just really screwed up and landed right here, one skid here, the other skid's all the way over here in the middle. The pivot point's here. So if you have a helicopter, which is always hanging from the middle and has an almost perfectly balanced weight, it's very hard to get it very out of weight for this kind of example. But let's say you got a 6,000 pound helicopter and you set it right down and you got 3,000 pounds on this side and 3,000 pounds on this side, and the teeter-totter is in the middle, then you really haven't done anything to try to lift the tug. Uh, so 
might not look like that from the videos, but that's the reality of, of what's going on. So no matter how heavy the helicopter is, you've put as much weight on one side trying to flip the tug as the other side trying to hold the tug down. And the tug weighs over 4,000 pounds, and that's without any fuel in it. So in order for you to put enough weight on the outside to try to lift that thing up, you would probably have to get a couple one-ton trucks to drive up ramps and park on the one side and maybe throw a bunch more weight on it and then get people on the other side to try to lift. It's just not realistic, not gonna happen. The tug's just as unlikely to flip over with the helicopter all the way to one side as it is to flip over with no helicopter landing on it at all. So I hope that makes sense. Hope that puts your mind at rest. And it's a great question and uh, I'm glad you guys are thinking about it because we just, as we engineered it, we thought about these things. We really put effort into it. We put solid works to work and we said, what, how much pressure does it take to tip things? And when our minds were at rest, we truly stopped thinking about it. So thanks for the question. Genuine, genuinely, we appreciate it. How well does leaked oil and fuel show up on the blue surface? Um, you know, it's a, it's a rhino lining type of a material surface on top of there. And um, you don't have to get it in blue. Blue is my favorite color. It's our company colors. Uh, blue, black, silver, and white are our favorite colors. So the chassis comes in white. That's the only color that will come in for a while. Um, some of you may bribe us into something different, but we can talk about that offline. The top surface is going to be blue because that's our color, but because it's a color that can change, it can make what. As far as how durable it is, anyone who's had a truck bed liner knows how durable this product is. It holds up really well to oil and fuel. Um, as we've been dealing with it, we've been dripping oil all over the uh, that helipad and we just wipe it up. No stains, no marks. I'm sure eventually it'll get worn out and it'll get looking ugly and you can touch it up with paint. But we've been abusing the heck out of this platform and uh, I'm, I'm really happy. It's holding up pretty well. Great question. Another question didn't come up near as often, but let's, let's talk about it. And I appreciate the question. Um, it says the fins, the wings look pretty thin out to the outside. Are you concerned that will bend under hard landing? Um, we're always concerned that stuff could bend under hard landing, but when you've got tools like SolidWorks and you can do FEA analysis, which is finite element analysis, we can take just one of those triangle ribs and we can put a load on it, decide how much weight to pull down here and before it starts to deflect or bend, whether it'll bend and come back or bend and stay bent. And uh, we did all those, uh, those stress tests. I want to say there's like 14 of those ribs in there. And the wing uh, is designed beyond the weakest link. And for us, the helicopter platform had to be stronger than the landing gear that's going to crash down onto it. So if any of you have seen some of the videos where people are doing run-on landings or engine failures and they come in to hit the runway real hard and the helicopter skids go which is designed to be the weakest link so you don't break your back. Helicopter skids are designed to fail before your neck or back do. Our tug keeps that in mind and all we needed to do was be stronger than the landing gear. So if the tug can handle a crash landing, if the landing gear starts to spread and the tug held its shape, now we're as strong as we need to be. If someone's gonna crash like, you know, some 8,000 foot per minute full dive and hit that tug, nothing's gonna protect it. If everything's gonna come apart. The helicopter's gonna get destroyed. The tug's gonna get destroyed. It's gonna be a really bad day for anyone. But for all intents and purposes, as hard as you can drop a helicopter on this platform, if you haven't bent your skids, you won't bend those wings. So great question, we appreciate you asking. Okay, this next question, there's not a lot of people asking this, but probably two or three, so I have to address it, and I just, I love where your head is at. Uh, how much to have an option for the helipad to self-align underneath you as you land? Wow, like, that would be awesome, because on a windy day, I can get pretty squirrely. I need to practice more on windy days in my helicopter. And so, um, yeah, I like where your head's at. The answer to your question is how much would it cost? Way too much. And uh, we just won't be developing that one. But I like where your head's at. It's awesome. That's a good idea. Um, Mike would love this one. Are there going to be solar panels uh, on the wing so you could fold it up and leave it outside charging? So you never have to plug it in. Uh, that's something that certainly could be done. The batteries on here are so big. I mean, those there's several of them and they're like that big. They're just huge, big 
box of lead to store power. Um, it would take a lot of solar panels to charge them. Uh, it could be done and it wouldn't be difficult. I don't see us adding that as an option, but it's a great idea. And uh, it, we can tell you what charging voltage and specs, if you wanted to add solar panels to the side of yours, uh, we'll give you whatever information you need to make that happen. Um, I don't think for the most part, people will be leaving the tugs outside permanently. I think they'll usually be parked inside. And at that point, we can plug them in, give them high current, which is good for the batteries. It helps prevent sulfate building up on the lead plates. And so it's actually good for batteries to plug it into the wall and just throw that fire at them and, and refresh them with a lot of current tie ups And also the ability to surge and pulse and refresh the batteries. Our chargers are a smart charger and batteries are expensive. So for me personally, I would want my tug plugged in um, so that my batteries would last a lot longer. Uh, there are charge controllers that are really good. So it, it certainly could be done. I think it's a, it's a great idea. Um, not an option we'll be adding, but uh, I love it. I think it's cool. So I love this one because it is actually out of uh, over 500 comments. This is in the top probably 15% and uh, I'm super flattered by it. It's great. The, the, uh, the comment, not a question, is the tug's so cool, I'm going to have to get my helicopter license now. Thank you. And yeah, go get your helicopter license. Like the goal is to bring more people into the general aviation family. If you're a fixed wing pilot or not a pilot at all, and you're going, you know what? Aviation looks awesome. That tug looks awesome. Everything about flying looks awesome. I want to become a helicopter pilot. Yes, I do it. I love it. And when the time's right and, and the budget's right, you can afford one of our tugs. We'd love for you to have one of our tugs as well. Um, and incidentally, now that I'm thinking about that, we have uh, our Bravo tugs, our walk behind tugs, have helicopter attachments for Robinson helicopters and have had for over six years now, where you can have a tug that moves an airplane and has a trailer attachment to move a boat and has a helicopter attachment that takes about 10 seconds to drop in that'll lift up your Robinson, lock onto that ball underneath and move that around. So you don't even have to get something as big or fancy as, as one of our Papa uh, pads. You can get one of our smaller tugs when you get your helicopter license. So go do it. I love it. Let's go play. So this one, uh, this one struck me in a funny way. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll read the question because enough people asked it and I'm going to give a completely non-answer. Um, is there any way to summons the tug or send it back? so you don't have to put it away. Um, yeah, we're not talking about that today. That, uh, that's really cool. It seems like something somebody ought to do, I think. We'll see. Talk to the insurance companies. All right, so this is uh, another question. It's just a different question that we've kind of addressed, but I, I like this, uh, it comes from Jay-Z. It says, honest question, how difficult or easy is it to land a heli perfectly centered so that the wings can be folded? Um, uh, Jade, it's the answer to that question is depends on the pilot. For me, it's difficult. I feel like I'm a pretty good fixed wing pilot and I really enjoy that. I don't fly my helicopter as much as I should. I'm great when it's up in the air, but I spend a lot of time in the air on a search and rescue and have one landing. And uh, nothing like these pilots that fly for a living where they're taking off and during tours and landing and taking off and landing and shuttling people to to tops of mountains to fix radio towers and landing and to just take off land take off land take off land i'm take off fly from the full tank down to time to land i go land once um boy that's a lot of trying to explain why i'm not the best at my landing so reality is i don't need an excuse i don't fly the chopper as much as i'd like to so for me it's hard to get landed straight first time another pilot at our airport he comes in on uh, his little pad is so small, I would never land on it. It is a tiny little pad. And if he's four inches right or four inches left, it's off. And he hits it 10 out of 10 times, all the time, never misses, never close, never sketchy. He's a much better pilot than me. But the real answer to your question is, you don't have to be. You can be a pilot, a helicopter pilot like me, and just come in and set it down. And then straighten out. That part's easy. Anyone can do that, even me. So this, uh, this question um, intrigued me a little bit. I'm guessing the pilot is uh, military or uh, law enforcement. 
um, but asking if it, the lighting could be um, set up for night vision optimization. Um, I'm going to play with that a little bit. Uh, I, you know, I fly search and rescue with a helicopter, and I've got night vision goggles that I use when I fly. And um, generally, when I'm up in the mountains, uh, it's it's only the night vision, and we're because we're in Utah, we're in the mountains and canyons. So my night vision flying and my nighttime flying is all in the mountains at night, and you rely on those goggles. So, but when I'm coming back to the airport environment uh, where the tug would be based or your home. Um, the tug could be based at a farm or ranch or business, whatever it is. Um, in, in that scenario, I usually take the goggles off. Um, I'm, I'm coming into a lit runway, a lit landing pad, and I'm, I'm not wearing the night vision. So, but I'll play with that. It, it intrigues me. Appreciate the, appreciate the question. Okay, so um, first off, I, I can't imagine uh, this guy's as angry as it sounds, I think the best thing you can do in life is assume the best in people. But the statement is, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. You say it's off road, but that frame is gonna get one tire in the air or the other, and now your drive tire can't go and you're gonna get stuck. What a joke. Um, I'm gonna put a smiling face at the end of that and assume you asked the question nicely. And, and, and I appreciate you being so nice about how you asked it. So. Um, it, it's actually a legitimate question. If the frame was too rigid and you went over uneven ground, yeah, you could get something picking up in the air and cause an issue. The, the frame is actually designed to have a little flex in it, but more importantly than that are transmissions and drive tires uh, float. They actually swing and pivot. Um, so they're, they're floating axles and floating drive tires. So. As you go over uneven grass, um, you could have tires, you know, swinging up and down on the drive corners of, of the tug. And so it does very, very well on uneven ground. Now, that being said, it's not going to go into Moab rock crawling up a hill. That's not what it's meant for. It's not going to go through a mud bog. It's not meant to go um, uh, up Sand Mountain like three wheelers with paddle tires. It's just, it's just not what it is. What it is meant to do is get you on and off of a nice flat grass area that um, until now you've never been able to do. And um, I don't think we needed to make full floating suspension to have really good traction for that, but we did anyway because somebody's gonna be on the ranch or farm and, and gonna need it. And if we're gonna make it, let's uh, make it right and do our best to, to live up to the best aviation products brand. So appreciate the question. It's a, it's a good question. And we, we put a lot of time and money um, and a lot of extra parts and bearings and axles and, and differentials um, into the unit that didn't have to be there just so that we could actually handle some slightly uneven ground, like transitioning from the grass to the ramp. Uh, we've got that covered. That's uh, it of the commonly asked questions. Uh, I really appreciate all the wonderful comments. I appreciate everybody's enthusiasm. I, I can't believe how much you're sharing the video. Um, we're excited about it. We're ex glad you're excited too. And we promise to keep improving, keep doing better, and uh, to continue to try to bring you the best aviation products to in every way possible, make aviation a little more fun, certainly safer, and uh, more accessible for everybody. So uh, thanks for tuning in. If you have any other questions, send them to us and we'll do what we can to help you out. So let's go play. So this is it. We're gonna lift the right wing only. We got the helicopter so crooked on our landing pad. If you're a student pilot, you probably just failed your check ride. This is Really, really crooked. So let's see what happens. We'll start lifting with the wing. I can tell the nose of the helicopter is already starting to get light. Oh, that's just taking nothing. That's maneuvering much like, there we go. Much like, uh, not even as much pressure as steering the chopper on the ground. Now, I'm not gonna say that's the way you should do it. I'm not gonna recommend that. We're just testing Worst case scenario options and the abuse people might put on our actuators. I can tell in this scenario, there was no stress on those actuators at all. 
Um, they didn't even slow down. They sounded the same way they normally would and the helicopter easily repositioned. What I would suggest is set down and slide over and straighten yourself out. Um, or the other option too, of course, is this is our smallest landing pad, get our bigger one. And then you still have the size that give you all that extra safety, uh, but you have a larger target that if you're a little crooked, you don't have to reposition. You can first try every time, but uh, I'm not that good of a pilot. I usually land and straighten. So it takes me 10 seconds. You have time for that. All right. In fact, I would say repositioning the chopper takes less time than what we just did. But uh, it was a fun test. <laughs>